Hi, I'm Leslie Samuelrich. I'm with Green Century Capital Management and I'm our president. So Leslie, tell us a little bit about Green Century Capital uh, Management. We are a firm that uses a three-pronged approach to responsible investing. The first is Wait, can I start again? Yeah, you can keep okay. going. I'll ask you the question okay. again. So, so this is not live or anything. Yeah, okay, good. Um, so Leslie, tell us a little bit about Green Capital um, Investing. Sure. Green Century Capital okay. Management is a firm that for over 27 years has been a leader in responsible investing. And we do it through a three-pronged approach. First, we look for responsible companies to invest in and help people align their values. Second, we lead a shareholder advocacy or engagement program. And third, we give 100% of our profits that we make managing the funds to environmental advocacy groups. And what makes your company unique compared to the other companies that are out there who claim that they're working in the ESG space? Sure, there, there are a few things. So one is that we go beyond ESG. For us, that's the starting point. Um, we add in value-based screens. So we found that, com that mm, we found that investors who want to make a difference with their investments also want the value alignment. So they don't want to just have the best fossil fuel company or the best chemical company. They don't really want to have any at all. So for those really dangerous industries that also carry a high risk, we screen them out of our investments. And then that allows us to invest in really sustainable companies like Vesta's Wind Systems, which is 20% of the global wind production. Um, but the things that then really stand us, stand us out, especially as more entrants come into the field, is the impact that investors can make through Green Century. So it's gaining a lot of traction in the field, talking about advocacy and proxy voting, but that is just really the first step, is voting your proxies. And so we go above and beyond that to lead a full advocacy program that engages companies all along supply chains to help them improve their practices and their policies. So that reduces risks to investors, but it also makes that real world impact that we think investors are looking for these days. Um, when it comes to engaging uh, investors, you know, through your experience, what do you think some of the best techniques are to really get them talking about ESG and you know making the choices as to how they mm -hmm. they you know they they invest? Right. I think for advisors, the best questions are to ask are what values do you have? Have you thought about making a difference with your money? A lot of times, people just have not even thought that they could. And so when you ask them, would you like to, almost unequivocally people say, yes, I want to make a difference. And then you go from there and ask what kind of issues they're concerned about. And there's a portfolio for every person that wants to use their assets to make a difference. And so I think the really important part is starting the conversation. Um, and that can be in person. We also do a lot of digital outreach. Um, and help people find Green Century and responsible investing that way. And then um, we were started as a place for individuals to really align their investments, so not, not even through advisors, but really for individuals to find it on themselves so that we... Uh, I have to start again. Um, so so we'll we were at the top. Yeah, so we were started as a place for individual investors to be able to align their values. And so we still go out to local events, mm -hmm. um, environmental fairs, organic food places. Our, our team goes out and talks to inv investors or potential investors just at that individual level. And we found the response there is really uh, overwhelming almost. Um, and then help connect them with financial advisors. So I guess when you're out in the field, you're really you're really in communities and mm -hmm. you're educating them and inspiring them. What are some of the questions that you hear the everyday person ask? You know, maybe the person who isn't a sophisticated investor, or mm -hmm. maybe it's their first time exploring how they can um, invest in ESG um, funds. What are you hearing from them? The first question that's on their minds, whether they ask it or not, is whether they're going to sacrifice performance. And there's so much data now that goes to show that you don't sacrifice performance. And in fact, you can enhance your performance by using ESG ratings, that that's one we always want to address off the top. And then after that, it sort of boils down to how do we do this? How do I do it in my retirement account? How do I do it in my savings? How do I do it in all sorts of investment vehicles? So we spend a lot of time educating 
um, individual investors and financial advisors who are new to the space just about the really simple steps, dispelling the old myths about sustainable investing and helping them get started. You, know, you mentioned education and we're here at the, the SRI conference and community and so much of okay. this community has built upon um, people sharing their wealth of knowledge and educating um, the people who are joining this community. Mm -hmm. and you've been here now for six years. Right. Tell us a little bit about your experience um, as you've come back year after year with the, to the SRI conference and community. Well, I, I started coming to the SRI conference and community at my first week uh, running Green Century and I didn't know what to expect and what I found was a group of people who were passionate and educated and very welcoming and so the thing that I've always appreciated about the event is that it's both a chance to meet new people who are entering the field learn a little bit more but then also come back to the community that you're talking about of, of old friends that maybe you only see once a year and you see them here. Um, and it's great to catch up and find out what's new in their firms and with their clients and investors and to figure out how we can help them. And your first time here was your first week into your new role and was also somewhat of a career change for you too from what I understand. It was. It was. I came from the nonprofit advocacy field and I spent a lot of time working on public health and environmental campaigns. And so after using those strategies for a long time, I wanted to see how we could make new kinds of changes sitting in the investor seat. And what have you discovered through those six years? I have discovered that companies listen to investors differently and a lot more. And even though we might be getting after the same end result, you know, reducing their business risks and making the world a better place, mm -hmm. that when you approach them as an investor, laying out the business case for them and showing them the competitive advantage they have, not just talking about the real world changes that might be needed, that they listen. And some companies are ahead of the game and I think appreciate hearing the feedback from people like us on the ground um, in terms of what issues to be looking for and what risks that we're seeing bubbling up that they can address. And we've had a lot of successful partnerships from working with Kellogg's on their supply chain around palm oil to Jack in the Box around their antibiotics policy. So some likely candidates, again, like Starbucks we've worked with a great deal, um, and some ones you might not think of. And you had mentioned during our conference today when you were on stage that you're doing a lot of work at, with tropical rainforests. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. We started working on tropical rainforests because deforestation represents 15% of the greenhouse gases right now. And with climate change being both a huge threat to humanity and the planet and also an issue of real concern for investors, we decided to take the tactic of working on this way of approaching it. It's so working on the ground through the commodities that, mm, I can do that. Okay, so we decided to tackle deforestation because it represents such a huge percentage of greenhouse gases. And what we looked at was how could commodities be grown differently that would help protect the tropical rainforest. And it turns out that commodities like palm oil and soybeans can still be used in supply chains. So we're not asking companies to not use them. We're saying purchase them from suppliers who are growing them in a sustainable way. And so in Southeast Asia, palm oil growers can use reclaimed land instead of burning down rainforests that have been home to orangutans and Sumatran tigers. And over the last five years, we've gotten the supply chain with other investors to move from 5% to 74% of palm oil being grown sustainably. And it's really been transformative in the supply chain. It is protecting public health, it's reducing business risks, and it's providing habitat for endangered species we all really care about. And this is these are the stories that investors want to hear about too. They do. I think investors always want to see how their portfolio performed, but if, they've, if they're coming to this space and wanting to make a difference with their assets, they want to know how they're making a tangible difference. And there's no better way to show it than telling them a story about the shareholder advocacy that their funds are doing. So we're in our 29th year now, the SRI conference and community, and next year's our 30th anniversary which will be your seventh year attending? So, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you see you know, from the time you leave this conference this weekend 
till this time next year. What would you like? To, what message would you like to come back and share next year? Is there something that you hold really close um, and dear to you that you're really working on and passionate about um, that you'd like to be able to share with the audience next year by way of progress? I like to share with the audience um, when we're here with our community is how we've made a difference on plastic pollution. It's a growing issue. We've been working on plastics for a long time, but given the urgency that we see it, um, both from the microplastics in people's rivers and, and lakes to the plastic entangling ocean life all around the world, that it's a solvable problem and investors together with nonprofits um, and governments could really make an impact on it. You know, we talked to um, Jeremy today and we also heard him speak at the conference mm -hmm. and he had referenced like really grassroots initiatives, you know, getting out there, um, working with your nonprofits, working within your communities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what did you take away from, from that message? Well, it's heartening to hear because we, again, are, were founded and are owned by nonprofits. And so to have that recognized as a way to make change is always great to hear. But I think it's, he's, not, he's really on to something that when you combine the investor voice with the research and activism of nonprofits, that together those two forces can really move forward an issue much more quickly. And so I think it's a really good model for shareholder advocacy that we've used and I hope other investors use more and can report on it next year. Thank you so much for being here today. <laughs> You're very welcome. Uh, I really enjoyed hearing this. Great, thank, thank you. you.